Hello and welcome to Microsoft Learn Live. Hi, I'm Scott Colton, and today I have with me Glossia. How are you today, Glossia? I'm fine. What about you? How is the future, Scott? <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful here in uh, Australia in the future. So I'll have the lot of numbers for you if you want for tonight. <laughs> oh, Jackie. Um, welcome to uh, Ignite, and I hope you've had a great Ignite so far. Um, today, we're going to be looking at building a cloud native application. Um, and we're going to go through this with you. Um, as we go through this, we'll recommend that you um, just watch the video and not try to follow at home. Um, this will be posted on uh, posted after the event. So if you want to do um, follow this video in your own time, you'll be able to pause it and, and do whatever you need to do. Um, but today, we'll be walking you through how to build a cloud native application. Um, first of all, I'm Scott Colton. I look after the developer advocate team um, that deals with cloud natives. And my passions are container runtimes and container security. And Glossia? So hello, my name is Glossa Lemos. I'm based on Brazil in Rio. Um, I'm cloud advocate here at Microsoft in the JavaScript, Node.js and TypeScript. So let's get started. Um, so if you want to follow along later, um, or if, if you do want to have a look at the code examples on your own screen while we're doing this, here is the links that you need. You can just scan the QR code. Um, that might make it easier for you than typing out the link. Um, and you can see that this is based on a learn module that will be online uh, after the event and continue going forward. So um, if you want to want to do it at a later date as well, this will be online and at, at, you'll be able to take advantage of it whenever you like. So these are the learning objectives, and I will thank Glossia for being here because the first thing I say I will uh, admit to starting off this learn module is I am not a Node expert, but Glossia is, so that's why she's here, um, and she's going to be walking through the finer details of of the Node experience for us, um, and it's a great learning experience for me because um, I will get a lot out of the session learning about what 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 she's going to um, be presenting with on the Node side. Um, but from the other points of views of the learning objectives, we're going to learn the concepts of uh, what cloud native applications look like. We're going to build a basic service. Um, we're going to extend the architecture. Uh, we're going to implement a database. Um, and then Glossy is going to go through and show us uh, how to build it in Node and Next.js, um, which is really exciting. Um, this is live and interactive. We have got uh, other experts on the chat. So make sure you say hi. Um, and if there's any questions, please post them in chat and we'll get, um, we'll hopefully be able to have enough time to answer them all. If not, we'll have one of our associates that um, is an expert on chat um, being able to answer the questions for you. So we'll just skip through the intro. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do um, with any cloud native application uh, is we'll need state. Um, so what we'll be doing first is building uh, a Azure service of Postgres database. Um, and that will keep the, the state for the configuration of our application. Um, the reason we'd, we would want to do this is um, we would prefer to do this than run, say, um, Postgres on AKS and have to be a Postgres and have a Postgres admin. Um, we'll just take advantage of using the Azure service, um, and then that allows us to to move forward and just use the the endpoint of Postgres and deploy our application. Um, so this is what we're going to build the service for. So you can see we work for a Datum Corporation. I've probably said that wrong, and um, I apologize if someone has said that correctly before me. Um, which ma manufactures small uh, appliances, refrigerators, air conditioning units. Um, we lead a small development team. Um, so what we that's why we want to use cloud services is because we only have a really small um, development team. We want to be super agile um, and taking advantage of cloud services like um, the Azure Postgres database means that we don't have to spend uh, engineering cycles on managing the database um, infrastructure. We can just use the endpoint and, and kind of forget about it and spend more time on our features in our application than, than our engineering cycles on the database layer. 
So we're going to define, first of all, what is it? What is a service? So what does the service look like? Um, when you're looking at cloud native um, workloads, basically the, the advantage of cloud native and the architecture of cloud native, um, especially if you're looking at things like containers and if you're on the bleeding edge looking at WASM, is the um, agility, scalability, um, and resil resiliency of workloads. So basically what, what we're looking at doing is building smaller services that we can scale, um, that we can put in multiple, multiple areas um, and that allows our application to handle more traffic, be more, more resilient to failures. And that's kind of the ethos of cloud native um, service definitions or architecture. So a service represents um, a component that can collect, uh, deliver a specific work take, work workload orientated. So what we're basically talking about here is a microservice. So um, instead of building uh, the like what we would have done in the past, possibly with a VM would be a monolithic service that would have everything on it. Um, we'll break our services down into smaller parts and, and we'll define a specific task that that service will do. Um, and we'll have multiple services running perhaps. Um, and that could be across your Kubernetes cluster. That could be across app service. That could be across between both. Um, there's no right or wrong way. Um, Cloud Native uh, doesn't give you an implementation details. It gives you um, a high level framework of how to, to architect your application. So as you can see here, this is just a, a really basic diagram of um, a simple application. And you can see there that you have the user that will hit the API gateway service. Um, and you'll have your two components there, uh, so three components, sorry, uh, services, and there'll be one, one database. So this is a really simple way of defining how cloud native applications could be built. Um, if you wanted a more a, like complex um, version of this, could you try again? Um, you could um, build it on AKS um, and have all those components running inside Kubernetes, and they could be scalable um, in their own right there, or they could be running in, as a simple single service. That might be all you need, and that could be in ACI. So again. Um, Cloud native, the the architecture doesn't um, doesn't isn't defined by an implementation. It's like find the best way to break up the service and find the, the right hosting tool or the right platform that makes sense for your business. Um, so, data, the database on Azure for Postgres comes in uh, three flavors. You have a single server, a flexible server and the hyperscale server um, and we will go through the differences in these shortly um, but there's pros and cons to each of these and there's um, cost benefits and, and uh, as well um, so we're only going to use one of these today um, and make sure you remember because there could be a questionnaire at the end where we'll be asking you which one we use um, so have a look and, and read the documentation on this uh, later if you're interested in Postgres for um, for Azure, and uh, because there yeah there's pros and cons to each of these approaches. We'll we'll just be doing a, a, a more simple approach today um, to show you the um, of how to get it working, um, and then that might not be suitable for a production ready environment. But there is plenty of document documentation on uh, Microsoft Docs of the different options once you go ahead and choose one. So I'm going to throw it over to Glossia now, and she's going to show us how to set up the database. So uh, right now, uh, let's do the first demo. So in this part of the 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 our learn session here, uh, we'll be creating a single server instance using the Azure database for PostgreSQL because Postgre you can use the PostgreSQL. Uh, d database because it's an open source database. So then you can mig mig do the migrate into the on-premises database into this Azure database for PostgreSQL. And then let's let's go to configure the Azure database for PostgreSQL SQL Server because we do we we need to do a, a bunch of 
uh, configurations inside in our uh, resource group. And then let's connect to the Azure database for PostgreSQL Server. And then let's create a table database, a simple database and table, because in the back end side, we will use the Node.js using the Express.js, but it's not necessary to use the Express.js. You can use also the Koa.js or Fastify.js, anything you be great for you. So in this case, in this demo, particularly, we use the Express.js. So firstly, we'll do right now into, let's go into the first demo. So we do have to go into the Azure portal and then let's uh, type the Azure database push degree to find out the service. To use the Azure, Microsoft Azure portal, you have to have, you need to have the subscription, but you can also use the Azure for students. So let's click on the create Azure database for PostgreSQL. We have a bunch of good information here, but for um, demo, we will use the single server. Let's click on the button create. And then we have to uh, set up our uh, information here. So the first thing is to create the resource group. So this resource group will, uh, must be the unique name. So in this case, let's include here as PS PostgreSQL-GB-RG. So click on the OK. And then in the server name, we have to create again a unique name. So in this case, I will include PS PSQL dash app dash ignite. In the data source, um, we will include here as a non. So in this case, we will, we will not change anything here. In the location, I know it will be in Portuguese because I'm based on Brazil, but I, I'm choose the West US 2, the version 11. Right now, let's configure our server to use a, our demo. So uh, let, let's click on here and configure server. Let's choose the basic tab here. But if you want to, in, in different proposal, you can use a different uh, steps here. So let's include it here a one vcor. And the part of the storage, let's include the 5GB because it's, it's just a simple demo. So, but if you want to, you can use any uh, gigabyte, gigabytes to use your application. So here we can see all the monthly costs using this con basic configuration. And let's click on in the bottom, OK. Awesome. So right now, let's include our admin or username. So in this case, let's include here students as the same as the, the, in the learn and the password. And let's confirm the password again. This password is already in the in the in the learn session. Let's click on the review and create, and we will see the basic information that are included in here. All the information about our resource group, about this resource. Let's click on the button create. And uh, right now, the Azure portal will validating all these informations. Right now we are submitting our template to into the resource group. Again, and right now let's go into the resource to see what has happened. We will see the resource group panel, but right now let's configure our Azure database for PostgreSQL server. In this case, let's go into the settings and then into the connection security because we need to do some conf uh, basic configurations. So in this part of uh, the demo, we'll include allow the access to Azure services. So in this case, let's choose the option yes. And here I hided my IP address. So I'll be including my IP address. And then let's choose 
the disabled information in the SS settings just for demo, um, uh, um, just for, for demo proposes. And then let's click on in the save button. So as you can see there, there is some settings that we've done glossier, isn't there, that you probably wouldn't want to do uh, in a production environment. But as we've mentioned before, and Glossier has mentioned uh, actually a couple of times, this is for demo purposes only. Again, um, the options that we've used for the database probably wouldn't be what you would use in a production environment, but this is really to show you how to get it up and running. So here I'm, I'm just saying that I will be uh, saving this information because uh, after our, uh, the next, uh, in the next, uh, demos, we will, we will use these information, especially the server name and the admin username. So let's keep all this information in some notepad. And that's it. So we finished our part of, no, actually we have to create our sample database and table right now. So to do this, let's open our uh, uh, comment line here in the Azure portal. In this case, we can choose between the Bash or PowerShell. In this case, I always like to use the, the Bash option here. So now I'll be creating some good information, especially using this command. This command is inside our learn uh, here, let's copy and paste the admin and the server name here. So let's copy this information here and copy in my comment line here in the Azure portal and enter. So this command will be creating our, uh, will be connected to the Azure database for PostgreSQL server. So I will include my password. Let, let me include here. Yes. Let me copy this information here. Let me pass here and then enter. So right now we are inciting our post degree, uh, inciting the Azure command line. So right now let's create our database. Our database will be CNA inventory. And then we go into the, the, this database. So right now we can see we created our database right now. So let, let's create right now the, the table. So uh, let me include to see here some good informations. So let me copy information here from the learn session here. Okay, so right now we are creating our table called uh, inventory. And here we have a bunch of information, ID, name, quantity. And now let's include some, uh, see our table created, our schema. And now let's um, um, follow me this command to, you know, include some um, newly informations. So in this case, let's include these values here and let's do the select from inventory table and we see our table created. So uh, this is the first demo. So let's go back to the, our presentation with Scott Cotton. So thanks, Glossy. As you can see there, um, that was wasn't too, too too much pain to set up a, a SQL database quite quickly on Azure. So now what we'll move on to is building the applications that will take advantage of using that database. <laughs> and as I mentioned earlier in the talk or the the learn session, um, cloud native applications don't require specific technologies. Um, so when you're building a cloud native application. It's more about the framework of the architecture, uh, not the implementation. So breaking up your services into microservices and, and so forth. Um, so you can, you, implementation details can be made on the, your business needs. Um, so there's, if someone says to you, this is the right way to build a cloud native app, that could be possibly correct for their business needs. 
but have a look at what your business needs, what your application needs, and that 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 implement, implementation might not be correct for you. Um, so what are the benefits of a modular design? Um, so as you can see here, here's our inventory service. We've got our front end, we've got our database, and we've got our web app. You can see the smart features are going to talk to the REST API. Um, our, management, our management interface is on the web app. And you could have this all running on um, Azure, Azure Kubernetes service. Um, so you could have scalability across uh, any of those applications, depending on your business needs. Um, and you could easily use uh, like a pod auto scaler or anything like that um, and, and custom metrics to make your application fully elastic across uh, the Kubernetes service. Um, today, we're not going to use Kubernetes. We're going to use app service. Um, but there is some learn modules we've got out there if you want to deploy um, an application on Azure Kubernetes service that you can follow. Um, to look at things like scaling and, and any of those problems, ingress, a TLS, and all those, all the goodness that you need for a production environment. So there's two um, architectures for, for building a, uh, a basic service, and they are domain driven and um, command and compute, uh, <laughs> command and query responsibility segregation. So uh, that's what we'll we'll be looking at. So um, I will now throw back to Glossia, and Glossia will have a look at building the first service for us. Yes, in this part, we'll uh, connect the Express JS to Azure Database for Postgres SQL. So in this part of the the demo, not necessary to use the Node.js, but you can use also C Sharp, Java, Python, any language. But in this case, let's use the Node.js. So in this part of the demo, let's create a simple Node.js Node Express web app. If you are a Node.js developer, it's not necessary not ju just only to use Express.js. Again, you can use Fastify, Okoa, anything else. But for proposals of demo, we will be using the Express. So after to, to do this, we'll be connect to the Node.js Express web app to Azure Database for PostgreSQL and then configure the Node.js Express routes for access to Azure Database for PostgreSQL because during the demo, we'll see that we'll be creating two different roads, the GET and the POST roads. And then we'll be validating the functionality of the Node.js Express web service. So uh, let's do it. So again, let's go into the Azure portal, but again, let's open the com comments slide. Again, I will be choosing the bash. I'll be typing some uh, uh, Azure commands. So I'll be creating a, 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 a folder here We're using the mk-dir-p cna-express and uh, CD into the this folder, CNA-Express. Let's go into the enter. And now uh, let's uh, create our packet, package.json. So to do this, we have to include this command, npm init dash yi. Enter. And we'll create our packet of JSON. We can see a bunch of good information here in our packet of JSON. So we will be install some de good dependencies to use this Node.js application. So uh, let's install our dependencies using the command uh, npm i express. So in this case, I will be install. Uh, express the dependence. Awesome. Right now, let's create a file called index.js. Enter. And uh, 
the 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 good thing is we can open our uh, Visual Studio Code inside our Azure portal, so we can see uh, a bunch of files in our uh, Node.js application. So we can see here the the index.js file. So let me remove because I tested before this application before here in my, on my machine. But let's go into the code. So right now I'm including the the informations about the Node.js. I'm including I'm creating here the uh, the the full part part uh, part eighty eighty. And uh, now uh, we go again to the packet the package dot JSON to make some uh, changes. So I'm including here. Um, um, some are good at dependencies here. For example, Express, HTTP, Morgan, Nodemon, and Body Parser because it's necessary for our Node.js application to running in our uh, command line. So let's close this editor. So now let's uh, install our Secularize uh, using the pg p, pg uh, H star. So in this case, I'm using the Sequelize. Sequelize is a R or ORM, but using the PG. PG is PostgreSQL. So let's install this dependence. And again, let's open our editor. So we can see here we already installed our PG H star in Sequelize. So let's come back again to the index.js file. So let's include our um, Sequelize. So in this case, I'm um, requiring this dependency inside our uh, index. And again, um, um, here I'm making uh, the connection between the Sequelize between our Azure database Postgre. So we can see we have to change some good information, including, for example, the server name. Again, let's pass the server name again here. And that's it. The next step is to make uh, to make the connection string configuration. So in this case, let's include this the this information here. In here, we are identifying defined all of the. Uh, information about our table inside our Node.js application. And here, let's create some routes. So in this case, we'll be creating two different routes. The post, because we have to create a new uh, uh, information inside our database. So we'll be creating the post route. And then we have to return this information for our uh, final customer. So in this case, let's include in the get round. So let's post this inform pass this information here. So we'll be doing the select uh, information use the ID. So we have the these two rounds here created. So let's save these informations. And return again to validate the functionality of the Node.js Express web service. So right now we are going to uh, creating a resource group uh, between to the uh, the the before uh, using the, the 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 resource group before into this new application because we do have to create a new resource group into the the Node.js because we, right now we are going to use the web app service. So that's why I have to create this new resource group. So uh, here we are going to create a free, uh, free, tier, uh, free tier using the F1 using the Linux. So in this, in this part of in the demo, I'll be creating the app service. And then uh, let's deploy uh, this Node.js into our uh, in the cloud. So let's use these commands. Using the command azita web app. Okay. 
Okay. So we created a bunch of, we, we already deployed our Node.js application. And here uh, we will see our global username because we are going to do the deployment. Let's use the, you know, the Git uh, steps here, and then let's do the deployment pass. You will see the deployment pass here. L let me change the, yes because it's so small here. So we will see the, the password. Ah, the password is above of us here. So we will we'll be copy this information here. This will be generated by our Azure portal. So let's pass this information, enter. And right now we are going to deploy our Node.js using the Azure Web App Service. And that's it. So let me see here again. So we can see that I can find all the information using the Node.js uh, integrated with the Azure database of Postgre. So it's a happy face. So it's working. So let's keep it. All right, that was awesome. Thanks, Lucia. So what, just to recap on what we've done now <clears throat> is we've created a Postgres database. We have created the, the web app in Node and we've connected to the database and we we're able to hit our database and re retrieve all our good inventory information. Um, so what we're going to do now is extend the, the architecture and build a REST API with Express.js. And again, that will connect to our database. And as Glossier said, um, there is multiple uh, JS frameworks you could use for that, this. We're just going to use uh, Next and uh, in the learning path, that's what we use. Uh, actually, if I was going to build it myself, I would actually build it in Go because that's what I usually write in. And I am learning Node.js along with you today. Thanks to Glossier. Um, but how to ex extend this uh, service architecture application? Oh, if we could just go back one slide. Um, so the reason we, we go for cloud native architecture is that we want our services to be resilient. We want our services to be um, responsive and we also want our services to be elastic. Um, so that is why we break our services up to, into small stateless services. We um, place in the state in a, in a singleized area um, actually, it doesn't even need to be singleized, but in this application, we're using uh, Postgres. Um, and that allows our services to be able to be uh, elastic and not need state when they scale. Um, so therefore, if we have something like a rush of fridge sales um, and our, all our appliances uh, are connecting all at once to our database, um, our service will be able to scale. And uh, also, choosing the right technology on the back end um, with the Postgres database technology type, um, the data plane will be able to scale with it as well. So this is why you would want to move um, to a cloud native um, technology architecture. All right, I'll throw it across the glass here again, and now let's build the next JS web app. So uh, this will be our last demo. So in this part, we will be focused in, in the front end side, but we will be using the, the CMS front end uh, framework called uh, Next.js. But you can use uh, any frameworks uh, uh, if you want to. For example, you can use Vue.js, Angular, or even React or Svelte, but for um, demo proposals will be using the Next.js. So in this part of the demo, we'll be configure our Next.js application. We will be deploying this, uh, this part of the front end side using the Azure App Service uh, hosting our Next.js application in the cloud. And then 
will be the demo, the functionality of the demo in the in the in the globally using this uh, deployment, validating our functionality of the Next.js application using the Azure portal together with you know, using the Azure Database Postgres and Node.js Express, Next.js, and even the Prisma, you'll be using right now the Prismas as well. So let's go back into the last demo right now. So let's come back again to the Azure portal. And again, uh, let's use again our comment slide. So right now we'll be fork forking our uh, Next.js application is already done here. So in this case, let's uh, get clone our Next.js application. Okay. And then uh, we already cloned our uh, repository into our command line. Uh, let's uh, creating our, um, go into this folder, ms-learn-cloud-native-apps, m03u07. And then uh, let's uh, open this information here to see our uh, Prisma schema. As, as I said, and again, we'll be using uh, Prisma. Prisma is the open source generation or, or RL. So let's use this uh, information here. So we see uh, the data, the data source DB using the provider port uh, the the uh, all the all the information is inside our Azure Database Repository server. So we can see here the ID, name, quantity, and the data, and the date. Let me, yes. So uh, right now we will be creating a, a, a file called uh, dot, dot env. The .env file is uh, important in a file because also we will be deploying this application into the cloud. Uh, we have a bunch of uh, uh, secret information, so we have to keep these informations. So when deploying our our front end application, we will, we will, uh, this information will be not available to the uh, globally inside in our repository. Yes. Let me go into the large again here. So let's uh, create, uh, let's open our uh, index.tsx. We can just see a bunch do, of. Oh, oh, yes, sorry, Glossy. Just yes. before we do that, we'll just pause the video for a second. Um, okay, we've okay. actually got a question um, that we, that from the audience that we, uh, um, we will ask is SQL is the most uh, entity framework like ORM in Node? Uh, uh, looks like uh, um, entity framework in the C sharp uh, is similar to the entity framework, but in the Node.js is the same as uh, entity framework in the C sharp. So when you decide to use the SQL is is much easier than use to create the model. Uh, in the MongoDB, you know, so that's why we, you, you, in this, in this learning session, we are using this, uh, or RM in, in the front and the back end side, the SQL is. It's very common to use because, uh, let, let the, the developer life more easier, you know, in the day by day, you know. Okay, perfect. So we'll carry on with the demo now. Thanks for answering that for us. Okay. So here in the index.tsx file, we can see a bunch of React uh, informations, but uh, right now uh, let's open our project. So uh, let me open here. Yes, let's include the code, code. We can see our editor again. Uh, let's open going into the folder pages in the index.tsx file. So we can see here the same information, the command line inside our online editor. 
Okay. Now let's uh, focus in in the uh, to retrieve the values of the Cosmos DB SQL API endpoint to to correspond in the access key. So in this case, let's include our username and the password here. And then uh, we will go to keep all of these informations again because we are using a paid service. So we have to keep all these uh, informations. Also, we will go into deployment of uh, this front end, uh, this front end application. If you will see right now our uh, .m file, we will see all the informations here. But will this file will be not uh, deployed you know, just to keep all these informations. So uh, the next step is to deploy this front end uh, application into the, using the service called Azure App Service uh, Web App. So in this case, let's uh, copy this Azure Slide command and pass here. So again, we are including this, in, we are, right now creating a new resource group here and integrated our new resource group into the, the, the last, the first resource group we created in the first demo, 01. Okay. And now uh, we'll be hosting the new Azure Web app use this command here. So again, we are, we are using the SQU B1. So this is a free tier to hosting our front end uh, applications using the Azure uh, service. So in this case, we are going to use the free tier. Now we'll be waiting for, yes. So we'll be very fast. So now, we have to make some, uh, we have to re, uh, reinitialize the global, the local Git repository to make the changes in the main branch. So let me change the, the, ah, okay. So here we go into running our application using the uh, version 12 in the Node.js. Because I know right now we are go we are use the LTS uh, Node.js 13 version, but here we have to use the 12 version. So uh, again, let's using our Git command to deploy to, to make the deployment of, of our front end application into the cloud. Okay. Now we are going to use our uh, deployment users and the password. But firstly, just to see that we are going to deploy all these informations here. And now we are going to use these informations to deploy, to host, to, to, to make the deployment, uh, our front end application to the cloud. So now we are going to use the famous, uh, command to push all these informations into the cloud. So right now let's include here the giddy push. Uh, yes. Firstly, we have to use the, the password. So let's use let's let's copy this information because after to use the giddy push upstream azure the into the master we have to use these two informations so now we will be using our famous uh, uh command which is the let me see actually yes i have to make the deployment before so let's configure locally our github repository then right now Yes, right now we're going to use the Git Remote Add Azure. So I'm going to get a command. Basic. Right now we are going to use the Git Push Set Upstream Azure Master. And then we'll ask for these two passwords. So in this case, we will use this uh, password below here. Below, no, above. Sorry. So let's pass here this information and then. We are going to 
deploying our front-end application to the cloud using the Azure Web App Service. We'll take uh, um, a few minutes because it depends on the part of the in the in the location you are going to use. Uh, let me see uh, App Service because I choose the App Service just to see. Yes, we have to click on the next JS. Let's click on here. Now we will be validating our functionality of the next JS uh, application. We go in, into the uh, let me see here into the development tools and the app service editor. Let's go into there. There's a lot of steps to do here, so don't worry because we do have a learn uh, path about it. Uh, we will see a bunch of good information here in the app service editor, but let's go into the comment line here, which is in the left side, this button here, the open console, and Let's include it here, the command to build our application. So in this case, npm run that script and build. Yeah. So now let's build our application because we, we, we want to see this, this application globally and online. So we'll finish to build our application. So let's come back into our Azure portal, go into in the overview in the essentials tab. Let's go see what will happen right now. Let's click on this link and we'll see our application online right now. I will share with you, all of you, this application is online right now. If you want to test right now, you can see, I will be sharing the chat for all of you here. So you can see that in, in just few steps, we will be deploying our uh, orchestrate deck uh, application using the, the main uh, stacks in the, in the, uh, hype it right now between the developers we are using you know the sql rs uh using the 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 next js the prisma uh using also you know the uh, azure database postgres sql the the main uh stacks of the developers are using especially the main companies and the corporations so uh this is a good application to test in out especially uh, I know we are teaching a bunch of, we have a bunch of good information here. There's a lot of steps to doing these three demos. It's around, the, uh, it's a kind of, I think, 20 or 30 minutes. But uh, after this session, I, I highly recommend all of you to go into the this learning path and try route in your homes because you're using the main stacks, using for the main and the important cooperation right now. So let's go back into our presentation with Scott, our Sensei containers. <laughs> <laughs> and as uh, Glossy alluded to, um, what you can do after this, um, as you can see, there was like quite a few steps and I was trying to follow along. As I mentioned earlier, I am no node expert, but I will be taking the learning path later um, and watching the video and pausing it at the moments I need to, um, looking at the code examples and going through the documentation to run it, uh, run it because uh, it's something new and exciting for me to learn. Um, and paired with this video with the learning path, I think um, they go hand in hand. It'll be a great opportunity for me to learn something new. All right, we'll do a knowledge check now and see um, if you're watching where from wherever you're watching from, I was going to say watching at home, but that might not be always true. Um, let's do a knowledge check and see with a poll 
if um, you've been paying attention, I suppose, to the questions and seeing uh, some of the technology checks. So here's question one. A developer plans to develop a basic service with data hosted in Azure databases for Postgres SQL. They want to ensure they'll be able to stop the database, the Azure database for Postgres SQL server costing idle periods to minimize costs. Which deployment mode should they use? So what do you think it is, Glossier? Um, well, to develop a basic service, but ensure they will be able to stop the Azure database, I think must be the flexible server, maybe? What do you think, Scott? Let's, I'm, I'm, going, I'm personally going with flexible server. I've just had a look and most people in the chat are choosing B, so let's have a look, drum roll. What's the answer? It is B. So, yes, if you want to, if you want to, um, <clears throat> if you want to um, save costs, uh, have a look at the Microsoft Docs on the the pros and cons of using the flexible server. But it is a great way um, to cut to minimize costs if you are using Postgres on Azure. Now let's go on to our next question. Which architectural pattern involves using the same service to perform all database operations? This one is pretty uh, easier because I, I have to perform all the database operations. So we have to create, read, update, delete. So, so <laughs> let's have a look and see. Well, I'm, I'm, going to say that I think I know which one this is, but we'll um, just wait for the people uh, on chat to, to vote and then see what they're coming, coming into. So let's see the answer right now. The answer is, oh, we haven't seen what Chad has said, but so we have a majority saying C and it is C. So well done if you, if you said C. Now let's move on to our third knowledge check. So that's good news that chat people in the chat are mostly um, a majority of the folks are getting all these questions right. And we'll just move on to the next one. What is the purpose of an object um, relational mapper? A defining how application endpoints respond to client requests. B, separation of read and update operations for data store. C, mapping programmatic constructs into corresponding database scheme. What one do you, what do you think it is glossy and why would you choose? Uh, because the question is object relational mappers. So we have to mapping something. So I think must be C. I'm going to say go with C as well, but 100% on on in chat have said C. So let's see if we are all correct. We are. Well, well done to all the people that voted and uh, to us also. We uh, got that all all correct. So let's summarize what we did um, today. Um, from a high level, we looked at um, cloud native architecture, the benefits of cloud native architecture, um, and also discussed that cloud native architecture is not an implementation detail, um, rather a framework to look at how to split your services up into small consumable objects, to take those services and make them elastic and also make them um, scale, oh, sorry, um, resilient. Um, we then took that idea and built a basic service. Um, we extended the architecture of the service by adding um, more services to the application. Um, so we had two services running. Um, and then we implemented the da database in SQL. Um, Glossier, could you go through in Node a bit more what we've done? 
so on the note services because there was a lot you covered there. Sure. In the node, uh, we will be available to make the connection between the Node.js ex using the express. But uh, again, uh, <laughs> sorry for saying this uh, a lot, but you can use also the COA, the fast to find, but in the demo proposals, we are using the express. How to make this connection between the uh, Node.js and the Azure database for post recycle. So in this part of the demo, we we'll, we we saw how we can make in, in just few steps to make this connection in few using the Azure portal, using this uh, uh, post recycle uh, Azure database for post recycle. And then in the in the last part of the demo, we we'll, we we'll saw uh, we saw the how to set up our next JS, but we can use also, you know, all uh, any uh, any front end front end framework for for example, Angular, Vue.js, Svelte, or even React. But in this case, we 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 uh, we used uh, the next JS uh, uh, front end uh, framework. So uh, in the in the last demo, we saw how we can man management our web app application use uh, our the, uh, the Azure web app service in some of few steps we can deploy and hosting our application in just few minutes. So we can inter integrate all these good informations in using just only a cloud native uh, service using the Azure cloud. So uh, the good thing is uh, about these demos, uh, we can orchestrate our application using these main stacks, especially, you know, uh, Node.js, Express, even Prisma, or just only the Next.js or other front end framework, just only using the only cloud, in this case, the Azure. So again, uh, as I said during the demos, if you want to learn a little bit more about all the three demos that we did here during this lunch session, we can see all these good informations in our uh, Microsoft Learning page. So we can see the name of the training is Build a Basic Cloud Native Service Using the PostgreSQL and Node.js. So you can stop this part of the the you can take a picture right now if you want to or just take uh, just using your you know the your cell phone right now and just take a look in this phenomenal uh, uh learning training inside our microsoft learn is for free you can learn everything for free you know you you don't need to paint anything you can learn new things for free using the microsoft learning page um but while we're still here, before we go, um, we still got a lot of time for questions. So if there's any questions, anyone in the chat has uh, anything, want to ask anything um, relating to cloud native technologies, or they want to talk about any of the node, um, um, the node um, code that we wrote, please now is the time because we're open for questions. Um, someone, someone asked, I saw some samples of Next.js with WordPress. Is that a, a completely different thing? Uh, I saw some samples of Next.js with a WordPress, but uh, samples of Next.js with WordPress, where? You, the person said that saw so, some samples, but where? Uh, is that a completely different thing? Uh, Next.js is see me as front end created by uh, Facebook based on a uh, React framework. So um, I don't know. Probably you can use because I, usually I don't use too much uh, Next.js in my uh, own applications. Usually I, I really love too much Vue.js. I'm a Vue.js lover, you know. So. Uh, I don't know how to answer this question right now, but I, I think you can make some integrations. I heard that you can make some good integrations with Next.js with some uh, uh, same as uh, uh, same as uh, 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 applications, you know, especially using I think WordPress. 
Next awesome. question. Okay, no more questions. So okay. Oh, uh, right, I, I, I I think that I I can uh, include some good uh, tips about it. For example, um, there's a a new stack that especially the the Net Node.js developers have been using a lot here, which is the Prisma. Prisma is a RMM or ORM generate gen, uh, who. Uh, who will help you to generate the, uh, to make the good relationship between the database, between to the, to the front end applications or even the back end side as well, using TypeScript or even Node.js. So I highly recommend you to use the Prisma because this is, a, uh, I do a lot of live coding in the Twitch uh, uh, weekly, but uh, doing my last, uh, uh, things that I have to do, my personal things. I I I have a lot of thing here. Uh, so uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about how to use Prisma with uh, Azure Database Server SQL, we do have a bunch of good information about it. And if you want to, you can ping me on Twitter. Uh, follow 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 me. I can send you all the link informations about how to use Prisma be, uh, together with Node.js or TypeScript together, how to integrate all these two main stacks using, you know, Azure Push uh, Azure, Azure Push SQL Server or using or also Azure SQL Server, for example. We just got a, a new question. Um, what's the differences with ExpressJS? Uh, you, you mean about Express.js with Next.js and uh, Coa.js and Fastify.js? Uh, there's a bunch of good uh, pros and cons about to use this uh, Express between, for example, Express versus Next.js, Express versus Coa, Express versus uh, Fastify. There's a pros and cons. So you, you have to analyze with your architecture uh, project uh, the person who projected your uh, the application to see what is the best uh, web-based uh, uh, configuration that you, you use in your application. For in my case, I, in my before to work here at a Microsoft, the most of the corporation companies uh, uh, usually use ExpressJS. Firstly, because the documentation, you can see the, the documentation in different languages. For example, here in Brazil, we speak Portuguese. So I can read the, 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 the ExpressJS documentation in Portuguese. So you can read the ExpressJS in Mandarin, Chinese, Spanish, Russian, so in different languages. Probably, uh, I, I always said that uh, everything that you need to learn, every new stack you have to learn, the first step is to go into the documentation. So probably the most uh, pros about to use the ExpressJS is the documentation because the, the, the Express documentation is very rich, but uh, you can also use Fastify or even CoaJS. CoaJS mostly, um, some developers, they really enjoy to use CoaJS, but uh, I, I have been seeing a movement between the Node.js developers making the uh, the migration between the Express.js into the Fastify because it's a new uh, web-based uh, Node.js. So in this case, I can see clearly, but I, for me, I prefer to use Express because here in Brazil, we still use, in my case here in Brazil, uh, a lot of company using Node.js together with Express, but I can see a good movement between to the corporations in the Node.js developers using, you know, uh, the Node.js using another web-based, for example, Koa, not, not too much Koa, but especially Nest.js or Fastify. So for me, the main cons is the documentation. I prefer to use Express because I can read the documentation in Portuguese. So this is my, I can see the, 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 the cons about to use the express. Any other questions? Just while we're waiting on any other questions, as Glossia said, uh, follow her on Twitter for anything, um, related to, to, to the JS stack. I won't just say node, I'll say JS. 
Um, and if you want to know anything cloud native, Kubernetes release, uh, related, um, then follow me on Twitter. I'm at Scott Colton. I didn't put, put it there, but it's just my name with an at sign at the front of it. Um, you will be able to, and if you might have any questions around cloud native, whether it be, um, Kubernetes centric, or if it will be, um, architecture specific, um, more than happy to answer any questions. Um, if we don't have any more questions in the chat, Firstly, I'd like to thank Glossia. I think she's done an absolutely wonderful job. There's a lot I've learned this morning. As I said, I am not a JS expert. Mm -hmm. um, I've even learned uh, about the different JS stacks now. So that's great. I, I am always a lifelong learner. That's something that I'm very passionate about. If there's something new that I can learn, I really love doing it. Um, so I would like to thank Glossia very, very much for that. Thank you, Scott. Uh, I've been learning a lot with you. <laughs> Um, I hope everyone's enjoyed Ignite, had a great um, a great experience, a great time here. As we've mentioned earlier in the talk, um, this will be recorded and on demand. Um, so please, we implore you to go to the learning path, um, use the video. You can pause it when you need to once you've got it on demand um, and do the learning path. Um, I, uh, As I said, I myself will be doing it to, to brush up and learn more about JS. Um, and with that, we'll say thank you very much for watching and goodbye. Thanks again, so, Glossia. No, just oh, a less, no, just no, just a less, just a less one tip because during the Microsoft Ignite sessions, we will have the Cloud Skills Challenge. So in this case, you can visit all the collection for the sessions, so you can see all the complete and at least one challenge to earn a free Microsoft certification because. You know, you don't need to pay anything to do any uh, Azure exam. So during the Ignite sessions, you can do the Cloud Skills Challenge. So if you want to, you can stop right now and click on in the in the uh, mobile phone and see you next time. All right. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.